Hi, welcome to Kuben This Edge Day. I am Tomoe Fujita with Sony Corporation, and we have a co-speaker from Sony China. He is also a software engineer named Feng Gao. First of all, we really appreciate for this opportunity and a community effort. Thanks for having us. And today, we're going to talk about Kubernetes Robotics Edge Cluster System. I will be sharing the most of the overviews, and the rest will be taken care of by Fan. Here is the today's agenda for this presentation. Starting with the introduction, we will go through the background, the problems, and the requirements, uh, especially for edge IoT use cases. And we will talk about what we want to achieve with using Kubernetes as in architecture with distributed system. Then we can even go deeper about robotics examples with Kubernetes to support distributed system on edge platform. So I am, my name is Tomei Fujita with Sony R&D Center at Sony Corporation. I am a software architect and developer, We're most likely working on system services, middleware, uh, like ROS, uh, Kubernetes, uh, in open source aspect. And I am also a member of uh, Robot Operating System Technical Steering Committee. I'm a firm with Sony China, responsible for software such as Kubernetes and the multimedia framework. Okay, so please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Besides, uh, we are going to be, uh, we will be available on the Slack channel, uh, warg-iot-edge. So let me do a quick introduction about Sony's purpose. The Sony's purpose is to fill the world with emotion through the power of creativity and technology. Our foundation is based on technology to create the new values within diverse and many businesses such as, such as data center, uh, data content, hardware sensors, consumer devices, medical and financial services. Okay, let's get started. At first, I'd like to come up with some backgrounds in a couple of slides. As we know, it's been happening that edge devices getting matured with computation connectivity and hardware accelerations and so on. At the same time, edge system gets complicated to support the distributed system and the connected system. Besides, considering about perception recognition with dynamic sensing data on the edge, the application should be dynamically adjusted against the environment. That is said, the system should be like circular refactoring system to adjust the dynamic environment. So what comes to robotics and robot use cases as a background? The robots are expected to work and help with highly tasks, even with multiple robots working together. This is easy to see if we can think about factory, logistics, rescue, and entertainment use cases. And if that is single robot that we are dealing with, that should be no problem to do operation. But what if it comes to like 10, hundreds, or thousands of robots we have to control and maintain? We surely need to consider that cases to do our development and the maintenance easy without any operation as well as possible. Especially during the development, the application developer does not want to do any operation to check the application. It has to be easy, quick, and efficient to go. Importantly, on its devices, the problem becomes complicated and there's a lot of dependencies compared to the cloud infrastructure. Think about the application portability, modularity. There should be some abstraction layer to conceal the hardware devices. From next two slides, let me introduce quickly about robot operating system, which is called ROS. As aspect from Kubernetes, we can just say ROS is one of the runtime framework and SDK. 
the robot operating system is a set of software libraries and tools that help you build your robot application from drivers to state-of-the-art algos and with the powerful developer tools ROS has what you need for your next robotics project and it's all open source what ROS provides is not only for SDK but also simulation tools which are really important and useful for robot application development The Gazebo is the simulation tool constructed on physics, sensors, and interfaces, including the UI. You can switch real world and simulation world easily, and application is agnostic from this world. That is said, you can just go develop the application without any hardware, but simulation at the very first place. Using ROS and Gazebo, you can have everything you need to develop your robotics application. This ROS Overview is needed for our explanation, and you can find a way or information about ROS on the internet. So now we stop here about talking about ROS, and let's be back on the main topic, which is Kubernetes related. Okay, so let's move on to the topics now. To start with the problems, what is the pain? As you can see here, uh, is the current situation that we have. The application needs to be integrated into the specific system every single time. Even if the application functionality is almost the same, there will be some operation cost for integration. This is because platform and system is different from one to another in the edge. And it takes time for application and system developers. What's the huge pain here is that it's real, that it's just the operation cost, but not exactly the, the development. We do not doing that. We do not like doing that anymore. We think nobody does. So we are proposing this cloud and edge common architecture. It is simple and common. It also can support distributed system. And the application should be platform agnostic. In other words, against the pain from the previous slide, once we get application developed, we can run that application wherever we like. Could be cloud, could be edge, could be you don't need to even care. Besides, you can see blue highlighted directions in the image on the right top. In the edge network, devices are connected, connect, connecting each other directly as distributed system to keep the performance. Continue to the previous slides, the application engineer's aspect, it is just appears to be a single entry point to manage the application. We do not need to operate for each devices anymore, but just accessing the dashboard front end will be all. Sometimes we want to deploy the application only on specific debug host, sometimes all over the nodes. Introducing the boundary between system and the application Application just requests what kind of capability or hardware devices are connected to run the application. So that the rest will be taken care of by framework and the application can be agnostic from the platform or dependencies. This is exactly one of the X system in the edge world. That is something we want to achieve. So we have been considering Kubernetes against this situation and the problems described before. And the answer for now, we could do that with Kubernetes. With Kubernetes, we can have most of our requirement as described slides before, such as development and application maintenance, roll up and down the application without any downtime, we can also keep the application running. Administration and device capability management and scalability up to 10,000 nodes in the cluster. Those are everything that Kubernetes main line provides and allows us to do that as it is. So after all, taking advantage of Kubernetes, we can actually support this architecture. We can have the flexible cloud and edge cluster system for application development and management and providing security enclaves 
and the capability is dynamically attached to the runtime pod when application starts running. This is what exactly we want to support as cloud and edge common architecture. From the next slides, Fen will be taking over the presentation to explain more details about its specific use cases and what we have done with Kubernetes. Thanks. I will be taking over from here. We have shared enough about our views and the requirements, so let's talk about more details here. We are going to talk about the four main subjects. Uh, dynamic cluster reconfiguration for edge IoT devices, distributed system and application with resource, dynamic security enclaves attachment with resource, and the hardware abstraction with the Kubernetes device plugin interface and the implementation. Here it describes edge distributed system on edge environment as in a typical use case, expecting multiple robots are connected in the same line and working together for user. Application is built on top of rules, which is publisher subscriber architectures as application layer to support the distributed system. There are face detection, eye detection, container runs inside pods on the worker nodes and the selector Container can select the images to notify the visualizer to display what image should be printing the monitor on primary node. This is one of the example, but we can do this with Kubernetes. Since this is a distributed system, it fails uh, independently and it appears to be a single system as user experience. The point what we want to mention here on this slide is we need to use WaveNet CNI. This will be needed if the application layer use multicast since ROS supports distributed system. It does endpoint discovery at the runtime with multicast. We have tried a few other CNIs, but Wave works out of the box when we use ROS. Thinking about consumer devices, Edge distributed system with inlines and even with third party application. There should or must be security certificate or key to control authorization and access permission for each endpoint. Security tends to be considered after development, but once it comes to production phase, that's something we cannot just ignore. Here it describes how to manage security enclaves as administrator and user, and how security enclaves are attached to appropriate ports dynamically. This is just something we can do with Kubernetes custom resource named configure map and the secrets. First, administrator register security enclaves for each endpoint and give them appropriate access permission via API server so that we can control the access permission in the first place. For example, third-party application developer can only see a couple of security enclaves for third-party application. And when we need to run the application, we can just say what we need to use for this port as security enclaves. The rest will be taken care of by Kubernetes. It will check the permission if the user is allowed to use that security enclave, and then loads and attaches the required security enclave dynamically on the endpoint port as volatile storage on the physical machine. Application ports can be agnostic from this binding by Kubernetes, but it just uses security enclaves to participate distributed the system and access the data objects. Once ports are shut down, security enclaves will be gone too. So far, we confirmed that everything works okay with those security feature like this. Uh, in edge devices, one of the most complication is platform dependency. Uh, there are so many devices we cannot even count all. 
but this should be also abstracted to application perspective. Uh, Kubernetes has interface named uh, device plugin, which is expected to use for GPU originally. As described here, device plugin implementation can be one of the Kubernetes customer resource and the interface are really simplified so that it should be easy to support implementation. Device plugin iterates with Kubernetes uh, to list, allocate, and bind the device for application ports dynamically. This really seems to be kind of abstraction that we want to have in edge use cases. So we did try to use that against our requirements. Uh, in edge IoT devices, there would be more complicated devices such as FPGA, special hardware acceleration, DSP, and so on. Also, we would want to add a virtual device provided as API access to the host system instead of binding physical device directly to application port, providing API from host system to application container that gives us more flexibility and security to control the access from container to host system. We already have the implementation something described on this slide. Application can request the device API if it has read access when application container starts internally or device plugin iterates with the host system manager and check the permission and provide the APIs requested by application. And the device APIs are attached to application container dynamically. This entire process of device plugin is perfectly concealed by application aspect. So for application, it is agnostic from this process and just goes with the device or APIs. So do we have everything we need for device plugin? The answer is no. There is an open issue for device plugin, which originally comes from our use case. As we mentioned before, edge devices are way more complicated. Some devices are not as simple to manage with open close, but require more and some specific operation when release the uh, resource. Device plugin currently does not have such kind of callback interface to release the device resource. So we have been working on with the community to support this requirement in the main line. Uh, if you are interested in this, please take a look at the KEP and leave some feedback and comments. Finally, we are going to talk about dynamic uh, cluster reconfiguration. As you can imagine, edge environment, there are some situations different from cloud infrastructure. At first, robot moves, vehicle moves. That means accidentally, robots move out of the network and usually where this network is used in edge devices, which we can see unstable network in addition. Uh, edge devices can be easily shut down or powered off, including misoperation and uh, works with battery, breaks down easily, and the cost should be well considered. Going with this situation and environment to use cluster system in edge, it has to be robust and reconfigurable without manual operation. Some methods are provided such as high availability, but we say it should be more dynamically reconfigured only in edge device. We expect this requirement for cluster reconfiguration in edge device. As you can see the picture on the left, there are some candidates for primary service. Technically, all devices can be primary. And they will do leader election within candidates. And once primary is online, that service is notified to all the worker nodes. Uh, even candidate nodes become worker nodes as well. If the worker nodes 
comes online in cluster network, it will detect the service is available dynamically and participate in the cluster system uh, vice versa. Also, namespace should uh, be applied. Thinking about uh, that use case, uh, multiple cluster network in the same line for factory and uh, logistics, uh, this is needed to support. So far, we have been developing this framework based on Kubernetes API to see if what more missing for our use cases. Uh, there are just the ideas, but we expect that these are also needed to support as a total solution for edge cluster system. In the future, application redeployment is required on more dynamic sensing data, uh, such as location, perception, and uh, recognition data. For example, if the location changes for physical world, application will be redeployed to adjust to that location. Robots in hospital should be aware of medical context. Robots in the store should be aware of food, drink context. And the support distributed system, we will need a kind of sidecar architecture to detect the failure, failure in entire system. Without that, it will be so hard to maintain the entire cluster system in edge devices. At this point, we think we can learn and study more from cloud experience. And uh, probably supporting microcontrollers with Cube Edge, more lightweight agent compared to Kubelet. Supporting this requirement, we believe that we can actually support Kubelet's cluster in edge system. Uh, the, that is all of our presentation. Appreciate for watching on this. And if you are interested, please feel free to make contact with us. Thanks.